Hi everyone, I am Suravi. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to uh, share a video about tips to get the kids interested in books. In the sense, uh, I get a lot many questions after I did the read aloud video that you know your, your kids are losing interest in books, a two and a half year old child doesn't look at the books anymore or doesn't just look at the pictures and goes away or maybe a seven, eight year old is not more, uh, no more interested in books or something like that. And uh, it made me think about my own journey with my two kids which, which are very different. Uh, in capability, in personality and uh, I have researched a lot on these things because I had similar issues uh, when I was bringing up my kids in all these six, seven years and I thought I'll tell you whatever I tried and what were the issues I faced and maybe, maybe somewhere it can connect to you and so that's the intention here. So before I proceed ahead, I'll explain to you that I have two kids, uh, S1 who is turning seven by year end. She's a voracious reader. She ate drank books since she was eight to nine months old i mean in the crib she will sleep by reading the books or looking at the books basically and the picture books and she'll wake up and she'll start looking at the books that's the only thing she did uh, and even now she eats and sleeps and drinks and everything books that kind of person she is whereas my younger one s2 who is turning six this year end uh did not show any interest in books Till she was two and a half or three year old i mean like i was reading books there were books all around the house because i had my elder one who was a reader but she never got attracted towards books she was uh even, even now she doesn't read and um, she's scared of reading but uh yeah we have figured out some things that she has started enjoying the books that is one thing so uh let's start with the first one is uh keep when you're reading books to kids make it special make it distraction free in the sense, when my younger, uh, my elder one was only child and the house had nothing, there were no toys, no puzzles, uh, you know, no Montessori shelf, no activities. So the only thing she could do for like first two years of her life was books. And that is what I felt that, you know, uh, maybe that made her feel uh, fall for books. Whereas when my younger one came into this world and when she turned like seven to eight months old, she had a Montessori shelf in front of her, not hers, but her sister's. Basically, she had so many colorful things, cutouts, activities, you know, uh, sensory activities I used to do. And she was involved in them, you know. Uh, as a baby, she was involved in them, though they were targeted for the elder one. So basically, she had so many options around the house to do that books were not interest to her. So uh, the thing I tried that... Uh, I made a nook or a corner or a time which is only books so anything else is not available to you you know just so that she was forced to sit with me and look at at least look at the books if not interested it's fine but at least look at the books and you know give me a chance to talk to her or develop interest in her so now even when uh, we do read alouds which are no chapter books so she likes them but you know uh, keeping that attention span is hard for her so i always do these you know book uh, read alouds in their bedroom uh, like when they know toys they are can cuddle to their toys i mean like a soft toys but they know blocks or legos or anything else which can you know distract her so she just sits there and stays at the roof or sometimes because uh, i mean like there's nothing else so she starts listening to it she can doesn't understand everything but you know that way i make sure that she listens something and uh now the problem is quite resolved now but uh, at least that thing worked for us that uh, when a child is two and two and a half year old when I really started worrying about she not being interested in books this thing worked that I removed the distraction from the area where I was reading to her she was not allowed I mean she could just sit and just look at me or not like me but she still uh, you know the only colorful thing she could look at was the book in my hand so that way at least she started sitting with me to look at the book so you know that thing worked so just try with your kids the other thing which was um, if the kids is not uh, looking at the book does not mean she is not listening okay so now because i have control i mean uh, crossed that phase that you know now she was sitting with me and looking but then my elder one went to this phase in the sense that uh, with time uh, you know elder one started reading herself that was a problem so me reading a book was not that fascinating to her because she didn't need to read the book she knew the story but yeah she loved that mama is reading and because there was no other distraction so she was still uh, you know getting a uh, repulsive Ki, you know i have to why mama is reading this book and you know it's just so boring and i like listening to you but what should i do what should i do there's nothing to look at the book there's no picture there what should i do 
and then uh, there was someone suggested and uh, I read somewhere that there was uh, we made a basket of read aloud toys in the sense some specific set of toys that will come out only when I'm doing a read aloud so um, uh, maybe some play-doh which I didn't give him earlier or some specific puzzle or something which she could do when I am reading a book where she cannot look at pictures you know so though it sound very contradictory to first one but you know that is what it has to change with the situation uh, of your child or you know what works for you but this is also the work that the kids who are very fidgety they want to touch the book and they get like oh there's nothing to look and you know they can't connect to you or they can't settle their brain on that particular book give them something else uh, to fidget with uh, and but keep talking like if she's playing on that side and I'll just in between ask oh so what do you think uh, do you think the camel was right the camel should have done that so and I realized that she was still listening to me she could answer my questions but it doesn't mean she has to come and look at the book because she had read that book seen that book hundred times and I still repeat it so uh, that also kept my elder one focused on read alouds and not put her away from me uh, because that was also a phase when a child start reading uh, themselves and uh, they they just like, like no we have read it so you still want to read aloud new books to them or the books which are heavy hefty and you want to build that connection to them spend some time to them so for that thing we used to take a basket of you know read aloud toys or read aloud activities and that kept my elder one still engaged with me while i was doing a read aloud so uh, the third one was uh, this was a very important thing there is no age appropriate book there is interest appropriate book I'll explain what so because our two kids are very similar age and uh, I am not a parenting expert so what I learned from my elder one uh, bringing up my elder one I try to do the same with my younger one example my elder one left the picture books when she was like one and a half year old she left that phase and she went to the story books with like uh, like earlier picture books was only picture books now it was text plus picture books so she went to that stage when one and a half year old and by the age she was like three and a half she was ready to read books you know uh, not completely but she was uh, uh, had the patience to sit through long story books which had like few pictures like if you see jack and beanstalk we have i mean we have two or three versions so some versions have three pages some version have 10 pages some version has 40 pages she was ready to sit through a 40 page version of Jack and Beanstalk at the age of four so I thought maybe you know that's how it works when it came to my younger one it didn't work first the two and a half years she didn't bother about any book be it a picture book textbook or any book she didn't bother after that also you know uh, I tried okay now she is four year old now she should be able to read Jack and Beanstalk because that's what my elder one read it didn't work out even at the age of five the book she enjoys the most is the nursery rhyme books. She enjoys Dr. Sue's uh, rhyming books that one fish, two fish, which which appears silly to me in a way because my five-year-old was, my elder one was done with them by the age of four. She was like into much more complicated books by that time. But my younger one still loves Gruffalo, uh, Julia Donaldson books, uh, this one, one fish, two fish, all these books which I thought that, you know, she should have been done by this time. But that's what I'm telling. Uh, and then I see other books like early reader books and all that. So I used to buy using, you know, age thing. It's not age thing. Maybe your five-year-old still loves Juliet Ralston and that's okay. Maybe she still loves rhymes and singing. It's okay. And I can tell you it is okay because now I have understood their personalities. Um, I'm telling all this in retrospect, okay? When it happened, it was not that comfortable but now I realize that my younger one is more of a kinesthetic learner she loves music she loves dancing she loves physical activities so you know when she's reading a book or listening to a Julia Donaldson book she can just you know connect to it like dancing and funny she doesn't need to focus on it and that's the reason even now even now when she's turning six her books favorite books are still the books with rhymes I mean not like typical rhyming nursery rhymes that is still her in her list but you know funny kind of things she is not into serious Arid Blyton or uh, you know those kind of uh, or serious Jack and Beanstalk or the big fairy tales or big you know even Osborn science books baby uh, like the books I got for elder one she's not interested and that's okay you know uh, it has to be interest appropriate it doesn't need to you know that five-year-old can read this book so my five-year-old will also like it no you have to check the interest of the child not the age because 
the growth system is different their mind grow is different say so oh, that doesn't work with them so uh, I, this one is very very important that uh, they had a grolier set of <coughs> grolier set of books okay a disney books and very very simple words and everything which my elder one was done by the age of 3 3 and a half my almost 6 year old still picks up those books for her comfort zone like when she is really tired and when she is i mean okay tell her to pick up a book for self read she'll pick up those grolier books and i wonder that at the age of 6 why does these images and these kind of pictures fascinate her but that's how it is so just focus on interest not the age and the next one which i realized that uh, there was a moment when i was really frustrated it happened some in last year where i was really really frustrated that nothing was working with her she was not reading she was not very much interested in books not interested in the kind of books i wanted her to read um she was still into nursery rhyme book kind of books and uh books are not only for practicing reading and developing phonics okay Folk, books teach you a lot of things a lot of moral stories um you know you can connect to kids through different lessons which are taught through stories and when she was not uh, so focused on read alouds or was not uh, interested in the books which i chose for her i was really frustrated and i did not know that what to do and i took a break i said i'm not reading anything not to them but i just like you know i was trying very hard to read aloud and twelve her interest and then i took a break and then we did audio books audio stories we had a google home or or you can take any speaker we took a subscription of spotify it had many moral stories of kids and that thing that worked that worked because like continuously like 6 to 8 months not but no 6 months they just listen to audio stories uh we tried uh big ones also but you know that much like harry potter that kind of heavy books cannot work on audio book with my kids but simple 5 minute story 10 minute story all these fairy tales you know jacky and jack the beanstalk and many new stories which i have not heard all those have audio version we listen to some podcast stories and that was a miracle for two things one that it calmed me down that you know i'm not able to connect to my child or my child is not learning the moral lessons or whatever kids should know at this age right uh it calmed me down because my kid was learning i could later talk to you know did you think jack did the right thing by going to the castle and killing the giant or uh, do you think who is the you know uh, three little pigs who was uh, the most hard working and what is the lesson from that story so even though she had not heard me read, uh, reading the book because she had heard those stories on the audio book i could connect to her many levels and then it was easy after taking a break of this much time after she connected to stories through audio books when later i again picked up these big fairy tales she could connect to them she come and said to me oh i know this story okay you are reading it to me okay so you know taking a break helped me calm down gave a break to her also and then that is the way actually she loved she developed her interest for books for stories because now she knew what the books have what mama is reading i don't have a scientific explanation how it works but this works so if your child if you are if you are struggling you may have a financial i mean like we had some personal issues uh you know A lot of uh, kids are bringing issues, a lot of tiredness and everything. And I had lost patience of reading. So if nothing else is working, try audio books. They can develop the interest in reading again. It works. So now also, uh, when I have a break, when I want a quiet time, we put audio books and uh, they listen to it. And then they can do knitting along with crafting and everything. But they're still listening to stories. And uh, once the audio book is stopped, I go back and then I pick up a book. and then she brings that you know i heard this story on audio can you get, read that book to me because i want to see the pictures now you know you see how it's working or i want to ask you questions about it or you know sometimes she hears some words in the story and she doesn't know the meaning so she wants to ask me i heard this word adorable what does it mean mama so the meaning of read aloud books is not phonics and making child read but it's giving a new way of thinking a new way of imagining a a different world to the kids so audio books work amazing if your child is not interested in reading as of now so now uh this uh, last thing is skip the sequence means uh again i had a vision that you know child start reading from here then it go to this age then it go to this age and this is a step we should follow 
it didn't work with my younger one she was into rhymes she went into read uh, read aloud these uh, julia donaldson's or grafalo these kind of books and then i thought she'll go to you know little detailed uh, books maybe some science books or swan books maybe some some fantasy things some magic princess books that was also in my version because that's how my elder one proceeded nope she's not interested what she's want to run is charlotte web why because she loves animals and uh, I was reading a lot for my elder one I was planning and she got so interested to know about pigs and spiders and sheep and she was like can you read it to me again tell it to line the purse again it's a an animal beast and I was reading a lot to my elder one but she, my younger one interested in you know she literally begs me to read this book to her because she finds it interesting again going back it is interest based skip the sequence don't bother you know what is a four year what does a four year old we should read that book to her or you know if standard things are working perfectly fine but if you think they're not working find something else uh erit blighton i have never read those books in my childhood i bought because everyone was reading my elder one loves them and now i am reading aloud from those books to my younger one who has not read them doesn't know reading uh and skipped all the middle zone of books you know so just skip the sequence just see what your child likes and connect to her through the books so that is the main thing and uh tips and tricks are done one last thing which i want to tell you from my own personal experience that you know each child is different and reading is not the best habit i'll tell you why so there is something called body type right uh so my uh elder one is pita type and younger one is water type i am telling you now but i didn't realize it earlier uh so that means that one of my child younger one is a kinesthetic learner she is like a wind she likes movement she can't sit at one place and focus on one thing unless she wants or like natural interest doesn't come to her so i told you like she connected to stories and audio then she wanted the books but my elder one is another body type she focus on the book first and then connects to stories so you have to understand your body type i mean your child's body type interest type that matters and second thing reading is not the best habit in the sense my elder one is a bookworm but then she doesn't help in chores she uh, you know always lives in the fantasy world uh, doesn't uh, know anything in the cooking style or any life practical skills it's very hard to you know bring her out of the world of the books and you know bring in the real life thing whereas my younger one uh, helps me in kitchen helps me with the laundry loves talking dancing you know there's so many other things because reading is not something which occupies a whole day so if in your child is not interested in reading or doesn't spend like uh, hours in reading or doesn't read a uh, big chapter books which her age kids should read it's okay probably she is excelling in something else maybe she is exploring some other genre maybe she exploring swimming or gymnastics or just rolling around just interactive with you and that's also okay because i'm telling you i'm living with two kids one is a bookworm and one is not a bookworm and sometimes i feel not living with a bookworm is a much better option because i have to spend much more effort to live with that bookworm to teach her some basic life skills which which are important you cannot live in the bookworm all the time you you miss out so many things she miss out so much fun stuff which me and my younger one have in the kitchen because she's always busy with books so you know don't worry it is it is a good thing if you can child can read and you know it's love books but it is not the end of world if she can maybe they are better at something else and that is also important so that's what i wanted to share today and hope it helps you and let me know if you have any questions maybe i can i can help in some other way thank you so much bye bye